Hi, I'm Peter Kalmström of Kalmström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I'll show you how to create a SharePoint web part using as much HTML5 techniques as possible. I'm going to start by building a SharePoint 2010 sandbox solution. The benefit of doing that is that I can deploy this web part both in SharePoint 2010 and in SharePoint 2013. It would work on Office 365 and I'm going to minimize the server-side code so that I can reuse my code as much as possible. Specifically, I can reuse my JavaScript code as much as possible. First, I'm going to create a new SharePoint 2010 sandbox solution. I'm going to add a module that will contain my HTML5 files, that is JavaScript, HTML, and um, CSS. Then I'm going to add a web part, and I'm going to add a site scoped feature. I'm going to deploy it just to see that everything works, and then I'm going to start working with JavaScript in the actual web part. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's jump into Visual Studio and create a new project. And the type of project I'm going to use is uh, C Sharp, SharePoint 2010, 2010 project like that. And I'm just going to do uh, HTML5 web part. That's fine, and OK. And I want to use this uh, SharePoint site. And of course, when you're building web ports for SharePoint 2010, you do need to have SharePoint on the same box that you're deploying on. So that's a huge under other video on how to set that up, but I assume that you already have that developer machine for SharePoint 2010 set up. If you don't, then I recommend the guide that um, Critical Path Training has put together on their website. So you can download that for free by becoming a member. Uh, Internet Wing Tip Com, and it's going to be a sandbox solution. I'm going to finish that now. That's going to create my project. And as you see, it doesn't really have that much yet. But I'm going to add the module first. Right click, add, new item. And then I'm going to select a module. And the module actually translates into a file folder on the SharePoint site. I'm going to open this in SharePoint Designer soon so that you can see how that works. And you need that directory name to be unique, of course. All right, and inside that, this folder now, I'm going to create subfolders. New folder there, just one for JS, and uh, one for images, for example, and maybe one for CSS too. So then I'm going to just add my JavaScript file, my existing one, existing item. And here I've added the um, jQuery file that I need. There's the jQuery. I added that on the desktop and just added that into the JS folder here. See that? There we go. And this, uh, when I create a new module, this sample TXT file it's automatically added. I'm going to delete that. And then, of course, in the elements file, you see that it does deploy this jQuery file, as it should. Now, the next step that I'm going to do is add a web part. And the one I want is this one, the web part, not the visual web part, because the visual web part is only available in um, Farm Solutions, and I'm doing a sandbox solution here. So. HTML5 again, call that web part HTML5, and then I'm just going to go ahead in this HTML file definition here, I'm going to add this to the group, calmstrom.com, so that we can see that something's happening here. Then I am going to, I actually have two features here that's not really needed, so I'm going to delete one of those, and go into the designer of that feature, rename it, HTML5 feature, and as you see now, I only have the module. So in order to get the web port that I've already added down here, I actually need to go ahead and change this to a site solution, or change the scope to the site, and then you see I get both of them in there, so I do want all of that deployed. Now, let's see if this works now. I'm just going to save all that and start running it. And as you see, this doesn't really contain much, but I'm going to attach to that. And let's just see under the site settings and under here the 
type collection features. You'll see that the HTML uh, HTML5 feature is actually there, and my very limited web part should be here also. I'm going to insert that web part there, and you see my category there, and there's my HTML5 web part. So far, so good. Let's actually add some functionality to this now. So the next step now is going into the web part. Stop debug mode here. Right, let me show you those files also, the ones that got created. So I'm going to run this again just to show you that part. I'm going to go into SharePoint Designer 2010. Just open this site. And what happened with those files now is that they went into here under All Files. And here you see my module HTML5 web part files. And here's my jQuery file. Excellent. So then I've showed you that that part works. Now the next step is to actually add some code here in the C Sharp section here of this web part. And I'm going to create an ordinary script control. So I'm going to add a reference to that library. That's where I have the script control. In here I'm going to add an HTML generic control. We we'll call it JS link. And I'm going to just create a new one here. And that's going to be a script link. <clears throat> and then I'm going to add some attributes to that. JS link, add attributes, attributes, add and the one I want is the type, and that's going to be a um, text JavaScript. Just link attributes, and, and then of course I want to have the source, and this is a bit trickier. And now I want to have the relative reference, of course, so that's going to be the path to the site. Oops. And then my the name of my directory here, HTML5 web part files. There we go. And then the JS and then the name of this file that I want to add. jQuery 1.102 min.js. Alright. Now then I'm I'm simply going to add that to the controls and just link. And that of course adds a link to this web part, adds a script link to this web part. And then I'm going to do the same thing, another generic control, and this is just going to be a canvas where I'll start drawing my content using JavaScript. And that's going to be a regular div tag. And uh, again, I'm going to add some attributes to that. Div canvas, attributes add, ID. Like that, so it has an ID of div canvas. It's fine. And then I'm going to simply add that to control also. Almost the same as this one. The canvas. So that should give me some content on my um, web part here. The script reference and a div. Actually, we need another JavaScript link. Now this only links, of course, to the library, the jQuery library. And I want to have another one here, one that actually does something. So I'm going to add a new item. And that's going to be another JavaScript file. Call that HTML5 web part. And there I'm going to add a reference to the jQuery library by dragging that in there. And then I need to do the same thing here, another link. I don't need to specify that this time. 
declare that variable. And it has the same attribute of JavaScript. The only thing I need to change here is the actual name of the JavaScript file, which would be HTML5 webpart.js, and then I'm adding that too. So now I should have two references to JavaScript files in my web part and one div, which I can do some work on. The next step is, of course, adding some code here in the JavaScript file. And I'm just going to do a ready. When the code is ready, I'm going to run my own function. Five web part loaded. And that's going to be a function. And the name of that function, of course, is going to be web part loaded. And then I'm going to ask for the div canvas. And there I'm going to do a classic HTML hello world on that one. All right. So this adds the controls. And of course, these JavaScript files will be run. And this is a regular when the page is loaded. And I'm going to add some HTML to this canvas div. So let's try to see if this runs now. Start again. Yes, attach. Right, now I'm just going to add the web part to the page. I can remove the shared documents for now. Insert web part, country.com, HTML5, add. And something went wrong. It's not doing what it should. Let's troubleshoot this now. Interesting. Let's see. We're going to go into the developer tools. Right, the debugger is already attached. All right, let's see. We can still see what's what is being loaded here. So we can see what files are being loaded. You can see the HTML5 web part is there. The jQuery file is there. So that so far so good. And let's see how this runs. We can actually debug this, of course, in there. So let's put a break there and reload the page and see what happens. The code is not actually run. Right? It's not hitting that web part. And the reason is this. I did a misspelling or I did the document ready wrong there in the jQuery. So let's stop that. Just change those and try it again. Touch. And here we go, now we're hitting the code, and I'm just going to add a watch here so that we actually see that we get an object here. Add a watch. And we can see that the length of that is actually one, so now it should work beautifully. And we should have our web part writing into the page at the right place. That concludes this 15-minute demo on how to build a web part. Now let's actually try this on uh, Office 365 also. Now I'm simply going to go ahead and publish this project, or sorry, on the build. I'm going to publish this, publish, and I'm going to just publish it to the file system for now. And that went fine, so let's go to my documents. Where it is, and um, it should be under my administrator documents. There we go. There is my solution package now. See, it's very, very small. But what I'm going to do now is go in and upload this package. So I'm just going to copy the path there to make sure I can use it. And then I'm going to go into my settings on this site, site settings. And there I have the solutions. And here I'm going to upload that. Then I'm going to activate this. Now, once this is activated, I can activate the feature on the site setting, on the site collection features there. And here's the HTML feature. It's already active now. Good. 
So I should be able to go in here, edit the page as usual, and here is my web part gallery under insert web part. There's the counterstorm.com one. I'm going to edit the HTML5 web part. And there it says hello world. The same code is running there in Office 365 and in SharePoint 2013 also. Thank you for watching this demonstration.